welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest haversack from Camp Craft Outdoors. This is the Indy. If this is the kind of thing you like, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comment box, and ring the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can also find me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram at Burning River Bushcraft. I also teach outdoor classes at OutdoorCore.com. So this is not intended to be a full review or what I carry in my haversack video. I just got this. So I threw a couple items in here as I was looking at it just to kind of show you what some of the pockets are for or what I envision some of these pockets for. I'm going to transition over to this bag and I will do a haversack loadout or what I carry in the spring and summer months and I'll be putting that up shortly. So I'm not real big on giving dimensions and weights and things in a video. But in this case, I'm going to do it. The bag is about 14 inches high and about 12 inches wide. So that's about the same size as the XL haversack that Camp Craft already makes. This one is a this one has a flat bottom to it, and this is heavy heavy canvas waxed. So that's why it's kind of regaining its shape of its shipping envelope because I haven't really used it yet. But the width on this is about four inches. So about four fingers wide. So when you stick a, a water bottle, a standard 32 inch water bottle is about three inches. And that's gonna be able to stand up down in the bottom. I like the fact that it's flat on the bottom so I can stand this up. A lot of times with the envelope style haversacks, when you set it down, it's gonna flop over. Uh, this is a pretty big improvement. So if you want a size comparison with the Indy without getting a tape measure out, this is the standard haversack. So this is an envelope style, so there's no flat bottom. And you see they kind of bulge out a little bit. And this is significantly larger. The ND is quite a bit bigger than the original haversack. So here is the XL haversack compared to the ND. And the XL is about the same width, maybe a little bit taller. This one's kind of broken and it's lost its shape, so it's not going to stand up nice and straight like the ND does. So we can also see these flaps are kind of tucked under and it does have a snap closure on both sides. Now, this is the Indy bag because this is designed after Indiana Jones haversack. Now, Indiana Jones had a, a gas mask bag that he was using for his bag, and this is kind of modeled after it, but inside it's got quite a few upgrades. Before we look inside, with these snaps closed, this bag is not gonna dump, and that is really, really important to me. If you were to have this fall out of a tree stand, if you were to dump a canoe, or if you just set this down in your vehicle and it starts rolling around and something important falls out of it, I like to have a bag that's secured. There's also this little loop here. Now this is kind of cool. This is going to be outside of the bag. So it's not covered under the flap at all. You can put your keychain, you can put a carabiner there. Uh, I think I might use this to lash uh, maybe a fire steel or something. So it's going to be with this bag at all times and there's no chance that I'm going to lose it. So here's the back side of the bag and you can see I've got one snap here which is going to give you some indication of what you're going to find inside. And there's these D-rings and that gives the bag just a little bit of movement. Now also some of the camp craft gear in the past has had a canvas sewn sling. This is a web sling. So I think this is a little more comfortable personally. And I can adjust this up and down. I can also use these D-rings to lash gear on that I want to have in the bag at all times. So I've got double D-rings here to adjust the web sling. And I haven't really adjusted this yet. I want to have a haversack as low as possible on my side that I can still reach the bottom. So if I've got the smallest item I've got so maybe a compass or something all the way down to the bottom. I want to be able to reach it without lifting the bag up and digging. So that's kind of how I set it. And this one's not bad. This is adjusted pretty good for an eyeball. Here's the bag on. Looks pretty nice. Not too big. This is not like a full briefcase or anything. And I can tuck that back. And you see with my profile, if I just have the front of the strap on my hip, the bag's kind of behind me. So that way when I'm going through thick brush, it's just going to brush off. I'm not catching every single thing. So that's kind of how I like to wear it. And this one's sitting pretty comfortable. I like the width of this strap. 
this is definitely pretty nice. So now when I undo these flaps, there is no pocket on the flap. So this is going to repel rain and everything. Uh, a flap like this is really important on a haversack or any shoulder bag. And inside, there is a couple dividers. So we've got a large deep pocket in the center. And then I've got these sleeves that is going to work with a water bottle. So they're pretty deep. They work with the grail just as well. And these inside pockets are not waxed. So this is the same material. It's just a unwaxed version, which means when you're slipping your water bottle and your cup and everything in and out all the time, it's just not going to be covered in wax. And you can see how deep that is with the water bottles out of there. And this would work with a folding saw. This would work with a big roll of cordage. And then it's, to keep things moderately organized in here, the front flap kind of has a divider, or the front section has a divider. And depth-wise, I've got a full-size kernel knife in here. So this pocket goes all the way down to the bottom. And that's going to just compartmentalize things a little bit. So maybe your flashlight, maybe your compass, certain things like that would be in the front section so that you know where they're at. You don't have to dig through the bag. You could have more camping type or more survival type items in the back here. And we see that there's a snap right here. So this snap keeps the back pocket closed. So I've got almost the same pocket that I do in the front along this back. And I really like the fact that I can snap this off and keep it close. Today was nasty anyway, but just for the new Cantcraft Indie Review, it decided to snow today. So this is April 18th, and we still, still are getting snow. So the back pocket here with this snap, what that does for me is that lets me put things in the back that I really don't need access to that often. And what's I put in here, and again, this is not a full loadout, I just kind of saw pockets and thought I would pack them, is an emergency space blanket. Now, I will use these things to kneel on, but this is primarily an emergency shelter for me, so I don't want to really screw with this thing. And when you get them brand new, they're packed up pretty tight, but you'll never get it this tight again. So I kind of have been reserving this one for emergencies. and. That is a pretty good spot for it. I can put it back in here. I'm not going to be putting my water bottle on top of it and putting a field manual on top of it and crushing it down. It'll be in here, kind of forgotten about until I need it. Another really good use for this would be maybe a foam pad. So a foam pad would give this a little bit more rigidity. And it's pretty stiff right now, but once I start wearing this bag in, you know, it'll just get like my other haversacks. So the canvas crushes down a little bit. And with a foam backer like that, it's gonna keep its shape, but then I can also pull that piece of foam out and use it for a kneeling pad, or I can use it for fire prep. So a lot of, a lot of reasons to have that. Now, if we look in the back here, I actually got a small carabiner as well. So this would be, a pretty good spot for your car keys. This might be where I put that ferro rod, to be honest. If I had a ferro rod dangling back here, uh, that's probably a better location than this front, this front loop here. So I'm still working my kinks out with this bag. I will get it all packed up, get it transitioned over, and I'll give you my loadout, and I'll give you probably a follow-up review after a few months of use. So here's a pretty good shot of that interior with my space blanket snapped away in there again. No water bottles, no cordage. I've got a pretty big main pocket and then I've got a pocket here in the front. And this would probably work just as well for a notebook. Uh, if I had a, a Peterson's field manual with me, that was probably where I would put this naturally. So it's a very well thought out bag. I hope this is not a limited edition bag. but it might be. So if you like this bag, I would head over to Camp Craft and I would order one. I think this was one of the first of maybe 20 or so. And I think another 30 were on the way. So I would not wait on this. So if this is a bag you want, 
definitely head over there if they don't have them in stock try to order one see if they have a backlist but this is definitely worth purchasing this is a great bag it's definitely an upgrade from a standard haversack and i really like a standard haversack this dresses up enough where you could carry this into a town i have flown carry on with a bag very very similar to this in the past this will probably fit a small laptop as well if you haven't made your mind up yet on this bag i don't know what else to say i've got to go shovel snow apparently in april Till next time this has been jamie boggs with burning river bushcraft see you soon